Jones, Smith, Russo, good to see you. Sit your butts down. Shop, shop, Blake, we don't have all day! Come on, Zabrowski, don't just stand there. Oi, Russo, Russo, give Smith his helmet back. Now! You know he gets so upset and he looks like a giant fucking baby without it. <laughs> I'm sorry, Smith, but you know it's true. You're big baldy. <laughs> Go on, you lot, stop narrowing. This isn't the bloody WR. Same card, WR. The Women's Institute. <laughs> they don't fucking teach you anything no more. Christ. Oh, right. We all here? We ready to get started? Good. Yeah, yeah, good! <laughs> yeah. All right. Most of you already know me, but formality of an investigation is a must. My name is Detective Charlie Mudd. Yes. <laughs> the reason we're all here, Anna Radcliffe, Caucasian female, age 15, went missing two days after her birthday on the 13th of October 2022. That was yesterday. <laughs> it was yesterday. It was yesterday. I know that. I'm just back to the fucking facts. 30th of October 2022. That was yesterday. She wasn't the type to run away. Discussions with her mother and friends have led us to believe that there was nothing mysterious or any strange behaviour happening in her life. We've come to the conclusion that she has been taken by someone. Now, as you all know, time is of the essence in a case like this. It is the first 48 hours that are crucial. If we don't get a lead or find them, then it is an even lesser chance that we will find them at all. An even greater chance. Saying this, we've only got half an hour for this meeting so that we can get out there and beat the street. Yeah. 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 So, take off your big old belly looking helmets and get your thinking caps on. <laughs> Not literally, Smith, just figuratively. <laughs> Firstly, let's eliminate some cliche suspects for you, prime time ITV lovers out. <laughs> Anna's father has a clear alibi. That being that he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he didn't fake his death so that he could get away with the perfect crime of kidnapping his daughter and being king of the creeps without us detecting him. No. He died of a genetic heart condition six years ago. <laughs> six years ago, he passed away very peacefully. God rest his son. <laughs> now, Jess Perkins? We're not going to exhume the dad's body to make sure that he's dead. Jesus Christ, Perkins, what the hell do you think this is? Some night of the living dead shit, some dawn of the dead shit, some day of the dead shit, some return of the living dead shit, some shorn of the dead shit, some dawn of the dead 2004 remake shit, Yeah. <laughs> 
I've seen the psychiatrist, I've seen the psychologist, and Goldberg even tweeted that Darren Brown to ask if I was a solid bloke. <laughs> Darren replied, probably. <laughs> <laughs> that being said, Anna's mother, Mrs. Jane Radcliffe, has a clear alibi. She was volunteering at a charity shop for dogs down on Reading Avenue at the time of Anna's disappearance. Couldn't get a more stereotypical indicator of a good person than that now, could we? <laughs> After interviewing Mrs. Radcliffe as well, it is clear that no motive is present. She's simply distraught. Just wants her daughter back. So we can eliminate her then. Some people in this world are just good. You can feel it in your gut. <laughs> it radiates from. I'm not saying you're good, I'm just pointing at you. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't be fucking egotistical. <laughs> Some of the darkest times that anyone on this planet can face, their light shines through. For legal reasons, evidence and an alibi is needed to clear their name, but you can still tell who these radiantly pe good people are. Jane Radcliffe is a good person. My wife. <laughs> 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 See me off <up>, pass. <laughs> we must do what we can for her, for them. Because if we don't, if good people suffer, then this world is not a fair and just place. And we as police officers must do what we can to make this world a fair and just place. Well, I'm offering this down. I need to go on to the next suspect. <laughs> <laughs>
your bloody hand. <laughs> I'm not giving it to you. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Learn the, uh, learn the dramatic angle that's going on. <laughs> so, where were we? I've lost the time bit. No, here it is. Oh. Okay. Where were we? Oh, second suspect. Family and friends. <laughs> it seems I can't grow it because I've just had to do 20 push ups. And all the brain's gone from me head to my muscles. <laughs> Family and friends, that says friends. <laughs> History and statistics show that. Crime of this nature is most likely to happen by somebody who's related to the victim. Suarez's so beloved dramas dictate that there should be a creepy uncle that we can all look out for. And you know what? He's in bloody luck! <laughs> and his uncle Sam Morris is being interrogated by Detective DeWitt right as we speak. Jane Radcliffe insisted, oh, oh, he's always had a really good relationship with Anna. It's always been really good. Yeah, he looks like a fucking creep, so I don't know what I Hopefully, he will be the culprit. I know it sounds bad, but like, it's easier to fix, easier to solve the crime, isn't it? Ray. 
awareness of the stranger picking up Anna is, is a very rare crime. It doesn't happen too much statistically. That's why it's the last thing we look at. It's also fucking difficult. So it gets to a point where you're just like, oh, why? Why do it? Why try? <laughs> She wouldn't have just gone off with no one. She would have gone with someone who she knew and trusted, who she had a prior relationship with, or someone who would lured her in with something to entice her. Like that nonce with all the chocolate and chitty chitty bang bang. <laughs> <laughs> or like Michael Jackson when he played that nonce with all the chocolate in the Charlie and the Chi Cho Charlie and the. <laughs> Charlie in the chocolate factory! <laughs> 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 Not just with all the chocolate. Spot on casting. Either way, it stands to reason that a stranger didn't grab her because she would have made a fuss, someone would have seen or heard her. And if it isn't the uncalled, then all we're left with is a mysterious man in a white van, which is a very hard lead to go. <laughs> Excuse me, Bible. Hello? Ah, oh, do it. Perfect timing. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah. That's all good, man. Thanks for having me. Emotional. Show me his wake! Not manly again. How's this for masculine? She wasn't murdered. COVID got her. Four vaccines and all that. I tell people that she was killed because I can make more sense of it. 
this idea that was strange but very present killer being out there, it spurred me on. People would look at me and they'd be like, he's doing it for his wife, he's out there, he's doing it for love. But I started to believe it myself. Murder always has a motive. There's always a meaning to it. Even if it's something as sadistic as sexual gratification. There's a reason. Compared to a parasitic microorganism killing its host by mistake. I try not to think about it too much because it makes me want to enjoy it. It would be so easy to stick my head in front of the tube on the way to work. I want to. But I don't. I don't because people like Hannah need me. And I feel like she needs me to be strong. This, this girl who, who fucking plays hockey, who plays piano, who, who holidays in Italy, who, who goes and does fucking badly at maths, who's, who's only ever kissed one boy, she didn't fucking like it that much. She thinks she might like girls, this incredible young woman. She needs me, she needs my help, and I think she needs me to be strong, a tough, no-nonsense man. I can't have any weaknesses. And so I can't have weaknesses that don't show that I fucking care, like my drinking. And my anger, my quick temper, they show that I'm letting the weight of it get to me, the pressure of everything. It's just shit, bro. It just doesn't work. It's not real. One of the reasons I love my wife is that she didn't care about those cliches. Unlike my parents. When I when I grew up, I wanted to be I wanted to be a pop star, not a rock star, right? Eh? <laughs> pop star. I'd like. parents never hit me, their words sure beat it out of me. Boys don't do that now, do they, Charlie? My wife, she wasn't like that. I remember the first time she caught me belting out Britney Spears. I was so embarrassed, frightened of her judgment, but she joined in. She was wonderful. Self-conscious nerd, <coughs> riddled with anxiety and low self-esteem. <coughs> if I was born any later, I probably would have been an incel.
They had tickets for the film, you saw it. Having tickets doesn't necessarily mean you went to see the film! No, no. 